We all remember Ziz, right? The guy who smoked darts, went to raves, and did a bunch of steroids, but stayed shredded year-round. The guy that seemingly started a revolution in the fitness industry and has a large role to play with where it's at right now. Well, since his passing, there's actually been many people just like him that have almost copied and pasted his entire lifestyle, including the person we're going to talk about today, John Skywalker, who virtually has the same look, the same lifestyle, the same aspirations. Now, John is not new to any kind of conflicts or controversy. He is often talked about due to his radical lifestyle, taking lots of recreational drugs as well as taking anabolic steroids and being quite open about it makes him a pretty easy target for a lot of other people to make videos on, including myself. And when you do things like this, it's not like people won't say things. And I think in part, that is generally how social media works. You have to inspire both negative and positive comments to get any sort of traction in the momentum that you want. But what I'm going to try to do is at least provide some value with this and hopefully bring you to some sort of conclusion from this kind of video. Anyways, John Skywalker. If you're not familiar with the guy, one look at his LinkedIn page tells you just about everything you need to know. He enjoys being jacked and attractive and letting the world know that he's jacked and attractive. I would actually err on the side of saying he's probably not super jacked, but he's at least somewhat attractive with a decent hairline, hair from the 2000s, and uh, a style to go with it, kitten caboodle. And simply put, with an Instagram page that looks like after hours of a rave club when used condoms are on the floor and the only thing left is that and smelly cologne, there's uh, some questionability, you know, with the, the attractiveness of this man. <laughs> Anyways, moving on to a more serious matter, Skywalker has some pretty damning health issues right now. And you might have not noticed because he posted this on his story and it was just gone within a few seconds. It wasn't something a lot of people caught on to. However, your boy captured some screenshots. And I think it is so important to address things like this and not just kind of gloss over it as John did, but go into depth about what is causing these issues and how one could go along a certain path to get these issues fixed. Now you can see this man is experiencing some serious bilateral edema in his limbs. And not only that, he is presenting with this sort of very odd skin rash. Of course, I'm not a doctor myself and looking at these things, I can't definitively say what is wrong or is not wrong with John. However, working with lots of clients and being in this industry of fitness, health, and specifically extreme bodybuilding, you do get to see a lot of different things and suddenly you become some male-formed healthcare practitioner in a weird kind of way. So I'm like a doctor doctor. And that's not to say I give any specific advice. It's just to say that I have to do research on topics that are so broad, it's kind of perplexing. But what he's experiencing would clearly lead me to believe that there's something multifactorial going on whether that's kidney dysfunction, immune dysfunction, and possibly some issues with the heart and specifically the circulation of his body. Again, I can't be super sure here. He mentions he's going to get blood work on Wednesday, which is as of today, the day I'm recording this. He has yet to say anything about that blood work, and I'm sure it's going to take a couple days to get the results. But what I would say is there's clearly an issue here with mixing anabolics, especially very potently hepatotoxic anabolics like trenbolone and recreation drugs and booze and nicotine in the form of cigarettes, there's a lot of correlating factors there that could lead to some organ damage or even worse organ failure. The things he's doing is, while not maybe so extreme by some people's eyes and sort of cool as a lifestyle, might not be conducive to overall well-being long term. It's one of the situations we often talk about where you're burning the candle at both ends and then some. Another thing that he could be experiencing is an to be completely honest, an STD. Yeah, sexually transmitted disease, or I think they call them infections now. But this could be anything ranging from herpes to literally HIV and AIDS. So I'm not going to point fingers and say that John has a, you know, STD from all the raving he does and who knows what drugs are in his system and how he gets along with those other people in the raves when he's on those copious amounts of drugs. But there could be something to be pointed at there and say, hey, you got an infectious disease, you should probably 
probably tackle that stuff. Now, again, I would add that even if this was an infectious disease, it would make sense for the skin rash, but it wouldn't necessarily make sense for the edema. However, if that infectious disease was to impede the immune function and impede circulation, then we would have some big issues with this sort of edema. Lastly, and to be honest, what I think is probably most plausible here is issues with circulation, specifically venous return. Usually, bilateral edema is caused by a complete failure or at least a partial failure in venous return. Then secondary to chronic deep venous system damage or incompetence. Deep vein thrombosis, for example, is another cause which usually is acute in nature and unilateral caused by the obstruction of deep veins. And so that kind of leads me to believe that there's a complete failure in venous return here because we're seeing this bilaterally on both feet. And they're not just slight bits of edema. This is literally ogre feet we're talking about in proportions of edema. I mean, it is actually crazy. Now, one thing that I think is also really critical is going to first principles when thinking about issues like this and asking yourself, well, instead of thinking what caused this, let's figure out what is edema as it is by definition. What is this water retention around my ankles by definition? Let's not just try to find a solution. Let's see what the problem is actually defined as. And when we look at what the problem is actually defined as, edema is by definition palpable swelling produced by the expansion of interstitial fluid volume, which occurs when movement of fluid from intravascular to interstitial space increases hydrostatic pressure and or decreased capillary ontotic pressure and or increased capillary permeability, as well as the retention of sodium and water by the kidneys. All of these things would certainly lead you to believe that there's something going on with his circulatory system and most specifically his kidney function. And look, it doesn't take rocket science to figure out that a lifestyle that involves heavy amounts of alcohol, again, recreational drugs such as cocaine and various others that do increase blood pressure and issues with circulatory function in the human body, compounded with anabolic steroid abuse, you're going to result in not a great organ system function, right? Like the kidneys are not going to love you and your liver is going to say, hey, dude, I can recover from a lot of shit, but this is kind of hectic. And so plausibly in John's case, he could truly be experiencing early signs of either kidney failure or massive circulatory dysfunction, which he absolutely needs to be treated for ASA motherfucking P. Because at the end of the day, the quicker you can catch these things, usually and ideally before they even cause situations such as this, the better off you're going to be in terms of your chances to not have to live on things like dialysis for the rest of your life, and more importantly, to save your life. The modern medical system really preaches the practice of wait until things are too bad to be fixed to come in and get fixed. For example, diabetes. Pre-diabetics don't really get any treatment until they're already too far gone and in the diabetic realm. Even if you see a trend of someone increasing their blood glucose and hemoglobin A1C over the past three years quite exponentially, a doctor won't do anything until it's within a certain reference range that he can say, all right, this is probably bad enough to treat now. And by that point, it's already too bad and the roller coaster has reached the peak and is coming down. There's nothing he can do about it. And the same kind of applies with John here. There was had to have been, there literally had to have been pre-existing warning signs that were completely ignored. And then this got to such a point in which we're experiencing elephant feet syndrome. And it's not good. It's not good at all. And this is what ends lives in bodybuilding, fitness, and anyone that uses steroids, but also that lives a lifestyle of complete indulgence and something that we could call abuse, right? With drugs, multiple different pathways of drugs, not just anabolics, but you're talking all sorts of shit. So if you are on the path of trying to look like Ziz or John himself, I do recommend taking care of your health. Damn, that rhymed. That was so good. But seriously, if you do this, you need to actually be aware that, hey, if I drink, I am now at a situation where I'm causing another essentially comorbidity with my anabolic use. Now I'm going to be smoking. I'm causing a comorbidity with my anabolic use. And these things don't just differentiate. They stack and they, they stack a lot and you can stack in negative favor really, really fast. And you need to be careful. If you decide to use one drug, it's probably a good idea not to use multiple drugs. But I'll catch you in the next video. If you like this one, I do coach people as well as my team coaches people. And if you're interested in any kind of fitness coaching or specifically bodybuilding coaching, we would love to help you out. We have pretty much all of the resources that you would need to be successful in terms of coaching. There's a couple links down below. If you're interested, find us down there as well. We have a discord group. It is paid and exclusive.
exclusive. However, we offer a lot in it. And I might add that it does support this channel tremendously if you do join. And lastly, if you are here watching this video right now and you don't want to take out your wallet and you just want free videos like this, hit the subscribe button. It helps me a ton and keeps me able to make these videos because I get positive feedback and YouTube puts my videos into the algorithm, which is super good stuff. But I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.